Cousin. On the seventh anniversary of the Fukushima's nuclear disaster, I received another mail from our friend in Alaska, Bill Laughing Bear, regarding increasing radiation levels of fish he himself has monitored in the coastal waters of Alaska since 2012. It is a timely revelation after Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, announced recently their big hope the ice wall has failed to freeze Fukushima's toxic water buildup, resulting in another million tons of toxic waste which will be dumped into the Pacific with no known technology to fix the problem and TEPCO claiming it will take at least 40 years to repair. It is a disaster that has changed our world forever. In a recent study by the University of Hawaii at Manoa have revealed almost 50% of fish consumed on the island of Hawaii are contaminated with cesium-134 which is the radioactive fingerprint of Fukushima. The report also showed that my, migrating organisms can transport the Fukushima signature cesium-134 over significant distances as they showed in Pacific bluefin tuna got off the California coast only one year after the accident. Another study found cesium-134 in longfin tuna along the western coast of the US just one year after the Fukushima disaster. As a musher in Alaska, I have often been blessed from collecting numerous people's previous year's salmon catch as they cleaned out their freezers, making room for the current year's catch. I fed it to, the, to my dog team and I ate pounds, endless pounds of it myself. I also have enjoyed standing on the banks of some of our first class rivers while fishing for salmon with a pearl which I no longer do. When the Fukushima fiasco occurred, it was obvious to me that with the currents that come up from the coast of Alaska from Japan, we were in trouble. I believed our fishing resources would become radioactive and because I love my dogs, as most would love their family members, I knew I had to verify this food supply was safe. However, talking to anyone I could who was supposedly in the know, I was assured there would be no problem. That did not ease my mind. I decided to invest in a radiation monitor of my own. I was told the most common monitor being used in Japan that people living near the Fukushima area use was the Radex RD1503. This meter is made in Moscow, Russia by Quarter Rad Limited. The meter reads two ways, micro sievert per hour or micro rontgen per hour. Once obtaining the meter I started taking readings of people's salmon. By the second year after the Fukushima incident, all salmon I scanned read radioactive. I have seen a steady increase in radiation levels of salmon through last year with not one salmon failing to register some contamination. Last year I checked my first halibut which came from local waters. It too registered radiation. Since halibut are bottom feeders, I thought this might explain why on my walks along the beach and seeing at various times dead crab, the occasional sea otter and a couple of times more jellyfish than I could count, not to mention numerous birds. I can say that I have found an increase of over 27% of radiation levels since around 2012. So whether the data I have observed is minimal or should be alarming, it is definitely building every year. Last year a woman I know who had just been released from the hospital after receiving numerous doses of radiation had me scan her body. It read lower than the salmon taken out of her freezer. Three days ago I talked with a commercial fisherman whom I respect and I asked him 
what he had heard about radi radiation levels and salmon. He told me they have been told there is no radiation problem in salmon and they are healthy. I told him that I was finding constant radiation and I would come over and scan his salmon in his freezer if he wanted me to. He was visually shaken. Many of us have chosen to no longer consume for ourselves or our dogs any seafood off the Pacific coast. From what I understand, radiation can build up in one's system. Bill goes on to say, I have also been warned by my friends and numerous others whose fish I have scanned to be quiet about this because it might not go well with me. But ethically, I feel I have a moral obligation to my fellow man and I am issuing a strong alert about the condition I have personally found with the salmon and halibut in Alaskan waters. I do not want anyone to suffer a slow burn with their health and life. I wouldn't want that on my conscience. I'm sure, Bill, that anybody listening to this video will appreciate your honesty. Thanks very much, buddy. By the way, Bill Laughing Bear has his own page on the Big Wobble if you want to read more of his research. On Wednesday, NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory was monitoring a massive, massive coronal hole more than 700,000 kilometers from the Sun's North Pole to its equator. They were expecting a G1 class solar storm to hit on Saturday, which of course it did. Wonderful auroras were seen as far south as Maine and Scotland as the Earth entered a G1 class geomagnetic storm. The old coronal hole has now left us, but another huge hole in the sun has turned to face us. Another massive magnitude 6.8 quake hit New Guinea, the fifth magnitude 6 plus quake since the initial magnitude 7.5 struck last weekend. More than 100 people were killed by the magnitude 7.5 quake that devastated Papua New Guinea's remote highlands last week, with the Red Cross said on Monday, thousands homeless without food and clean water. It's been a busy week for volcanoes. The Japanese Shin Mudaik volcano erupted and caused cancellation of flights after ash reached 3,000. 650 meters in the peak's strongest eruption in seven years. Rocks were reported to be falling on towns and villages up to five miles away. It's the Japanese volcano you can see on the screen. The Turrialba volcano in Costa Rica awoke this week erupting gases, ash and incandescent fragments of fresh lava with a Strombolian eruption phase on Thursday. And the Philippines' most active colossus, the Mayan volcano, blew red-hot lava and clouds of ash erupting hundreds of metres into the air on seven separate periods in 24 hours on Friday. And finally, Mount Etna, one of the world's most active volcanoes, caused panic after several shocks shook the volcano in just five minutes on Friday. And untold millions of dead marine life washed up this week around the coastal areas of the UK in the wake of the Beast of the East and Storm Emma. And on Thursday, the second nor'easter in a week, dumps more than two foot of snow along the northeastern coast of the US. And as I'm making this video, I do believe they are suffering their third nor'easter at this very moment. And on Friday, Category 4 Cyclone Hola hit New Caledonia after battering the South Pacific island of Vanuatu. It's now causing problems on the North Island of New Zealand. Well, that's it again. 
a uh, big thanks to Bill Laughing Bear with his fantastic report from uh, Alaska. Thank you all for watching and I hope that I'll see you all next week.